Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Congratulations, the Offscript uh, sports talk show. As always, I'm your host, and I'm joined by Marcus, of course, as usual. Marcus, how are you doing? Hey, doing pretty good. Yeah, definitely better because, you know, it wasn't looking good there at first this, before we were coming on yeah. here because, you know, I thought we were going to totally have a doom and gloom because obviously the Mariners' season is over, so. Um. Yeah, it would have been more over if we would have lost three to nothing like we all thought we were going to. Yeah, yeah, but uh, thankfully our savior Julio came to the rescue, and uh, sure at did. least we at least lived to see another day, at least one more day. So yeah, they, they gave us a little bit of hope, but uh, yeah. yeah, no worries. We no, no, worries no worries. No worries. So I also want to just put it out there: um, there's a chance that Jack might make an appearance here. He is just moseying around here right <laughs> now, and uh, yeah, he might he might pop in, uh, if you hear any weird noises in the background, that's, that's him, like that sneeze right now, you probably heard that, that's him, uh, stay away from my shoes, buddy, all right, oh, so, does yeah. he choose shoes, <laughs> well, he, he's got a certain set of shoes, but he likes, he's, he's, he's just a curious pup, so, yeah, of course, I don't know, if this is a little off topic, but so is this whole thing, yes. uh, my dogs, when they were puppies, preferred to chew on women's shoes than men's shoes, I don't know if that's a thing in your household or not, huh. Uh, well, Jack's no, mostly no. Jack's mostly gone towards uh, carry shoes, and Jack is on camera right now. So <laughs> yeah, see, there you go. See, it's, so it's weird that dogs must prefer women's shoes over men's shoes. I don't know what the deal is. Yeah, I don't know. So, but uh, yeah, so there's Jack making his first appearance on Congratulations. So yeah, he's he's here on camera. All right. Well, let's uh let's try to stay somewhat uh somewhat you know decent here and somewhat <laughs> like a. And, like we know what we're doing, so yeah. First right. off, before we get going into things, what's your drink of the week this week? Today I got some uh, vodka with uh, with Gatorade and a splash of lime. Oh, vodka and Gatorade! Never never tried that before. Oh, really? It's it's great. It keeps you hydrated, and it, it, yeah, it's, it's delicious and keeps you hydrated. So there. All right. Well, uh, for me this week, I'm going with a. Uh, Cran Peach mixed with Peach Crown. Oh, wow. Yeah, and Jack's trying to get some right now, but uh, nope, this isn't for you, buddy. That sounds delicious. It is. It's pretty good, yeah. So. yeah. I was going to just have a simple uh, hard Mountain Dew, but I didn't know if that would upset you for since I didn't. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, still, waiting, still waiting for those. those. You, know, my, you know, my birthday is coming up, so. <laughs> oh, when's that? In about a month. Actually, yeah, one Ooh. month from today. Yeah, one month from today. Right. Well, we'll see about that. I, ex- I expect those delivered before our big uh, Cinco de Mayo slash birthday party, which I know you're going to come to as well. So. Oh, absolutely! I'll be there. Yeah. All right. Well, let's uh, let's get to things here. So we'll start off by talking about these awesome, amazing Mariners who've just gone off to a spectacular <laughs> start. Um, you know, be, us being the resident Mariners homers. Oh, hello. Here's Jack. Okay. Well, Jack is fully. Is. Jack is in the show. All right. Yep. All right. Well, we're gonna keep going. All right. Um, so the Mariners, you wanna you wanna take this one while I try to r- wrangle this pooch here? Yeah, sure. I could talk about these losers. I mean, awesome Mariners. Uh, no, yeah. As you, anybody who watched the or listened, sorry, well, watched and listened to the first episode, we were both quite high on them, and one of us might have picked us to win the entire th- or at least get to the World Series. And you know, I, maybe so it's I your still fault. think that could happen. Yeah, I, I might have jinxed them because uh, we've now started three and five at least. Uh, luckily, it's not two and six. It was looking pretty bad today for a bit, but yeah, it's uh, the consistency on offense is just zero right now. It's either we score, uh, you know, five to twelve runs or like zero. So yeah, it, and the bullpen is regressing hard. Like we kind of maybe thought they would. Yeah, I mean, the bullpen though they they haven't really. I feel like they haven't really had any chances really to really you know show what they're made of because they haven't really been putting i feel like when they've had the chances to shut down games i feel like they have like today that is that is true you're right and the few times they've actually you're right the the other they've been more low leverage where they've given up a lot of runs i guess uh so yeah it i I definitely think that'll even out a little bit and i i mean like guys like got trevor got had looked pretty good so that's pretty encouraging i would say and and Seawald, I think, has looked decent so far, which is also I, – I considered him kind of the X factor in the mm-hmm. bullpen. Uh, he's kind of the the hinge that it swings on. It's like if he's going to be terrible, then 
then it's not going to be good. The bullpen, uh, you know, we got the top tier guys and we got the bottom tier guys and he's kind of the guy that could hold it all together. And so far he's looked pretty good and we need him for that depth in the bullpen for sure. So, for sure. so far I like it. So I, you know, obviously Munoz hasn't looked as dominant as he could look and neither is Brash, although they have and they haven't. It's kind of one of those things. They, they still look nasty. Yeah. As yeah with Munoz, be. man, it's just been bad luck. Like, Correct. Feel like yes. that's a lot of what's going to happen. I feel like is it's just those batters trying to just put the bat on his on the ball, you know, whatever. Yeah. And it's just sometimes, sometimes you're just going to get a weak hit that's going to find a hole. Unfortunately, with that, well, especially if you're throwing 101 yeah. miles an hour. Yeah. yeah Fortunately, that type of hit is going to happen often. Often, so. Yes. But. And you know, a few less shifts, so there's you know people aren't playing right into. We're not playing into the you know the managers of shifts like last year. So yeah, things yeah. like that are going to happen a little more often this year, I would say. Yeah. So, but yeah, it, I do think the bullpen is going to even out. I'm not too worried about that yet. But I guess I would say I'm slightly concerned about the starting pitching, especially uh, the possible health of the starting pitching, including Robbie Ray and uh, hopefully not Logan Gilbert. But his velocity was down today, and I this is this would just be our luck. Last year we go through the entire year with basically no starting pitching injuries, and now this year. It's, I don't know. I, I'm not going to say anything yeah. wrong with Logan Gilbert yet. But, um, uh, I just actually heard on the radio talking. It sounds like he's fine. It sounds like it might have just been a mechanics thing, especially that weather there today. Because um, he said, straight from him, he says he feels fine. He's really not sure. He says he feels like maybe it's just a mechanics thing. So okay. obviously they'll take a look at things, but he said he feels fine. So Okay. And and I honestly don't know how he was throwing at the very beginning of the game. I missed like the, the first inning. Uh, mm -hmm. But... Uh, it sounds like his so, velo was down about five or six miles per hour. Jeez, even at the very beginning, it wasn't just near the fourth inning. Uh, I, I'm not entirely sure, but that's, that's what it yeah. sounds like. Yeah, I have a I for for anyone who's in, in, interested, I have a, a wife here who had hip surgery, so I was I was dealing with that at the at the beginning, so I missed a slight bit of it. Priorities, but, man, priorities. Yes, priorities. I get it. I I screwed that up. I should have watched <laughs> the the entire game, but. But yeah, so that I mean that's it's concerning, but, but I'll I'll take the the word for it from Logan Gilbert for yeah. now, and I'll, yeah. we'll just try to not even think about that and put it out of my mind then. Mm -hmm. And you know, you got guys like George Kirby who didn't look good in his first first start. So the starting pitching and the consistency on offense so far have been non-existent. Besides, clearly Luis Castillo. So yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I mean. Pretty much the same sentiments. Uh, oh, yeah, real quick, I forgot to mention, uh, if you notice the background, um, some t difficulties with the green screen stuff. I know it worked fine last time, but um, I'm going to actually fool around and see if I can still transport myself, so see if I can still fix the background and put in a background. But if not, you'll see that there's a Mariners flag with us. The, the, the S is sideways, and then you can see the Seahawks logo stuff popping through. So it's all over the place right now. So oh, it, it, it is what it is. A, you should get a photo of... Uh, Adam Fraser and Jesse Winker put on there because oh, I think some of us might be missing them right now. Oh, geez. Yeah. Um, Not really, but you know what no. I mean. It's just um, the, the guy, like Colton Wong has done yeah, nothing so far. Yeah. He's, he's notoriously streaky, so I'm not worried about him. But yeah. it wouldn't be the um, worst thing ever to have Jesse Winker as our DH right now. Let's just say that. I mean, maybe. but we'll, Not we'll the worst see. thing ever. I didn't say it would be good. I just said it wouldn't be the worst thing ever. That's all. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it's one week in the season. I know we've gone off to, you know, it would be nice, obviously, to get off to a good start, but mm -hmm. the Mariners are notorious for, you know, no matter what team or year, they're notorious for starting slow. Um, no, they're notorious for starting the way that they're not going to end. They're either going to start 13-2 yeah. and then fall off a cliff, or yeah, they're going to start so. kind of bad and then do pretty good. Yeah, so. I'd rather I'd rather start 2-13 and 13 and finish 95-67 and 67 I, than the other way around. I would so. agree. I think we all knew that year when we started 13-2 and two yeah. and had like a yeah. home run record that that was fake, but yeah. uh, it was fun at least. It was. Um yeah, so I mean, they're going to be fine. Um, it helps that the Astros are struggling right now, too. They lost again today as well in the extra innings to the Twins. Um, so it helps so the Rangers. I think the Rangers lost 2 to nothing. Yeah, Rangers lost as well, so that, that all helps. Um, yep. The Angels, they're going to be the Angels. They'll start fine, but they're, yeah. they're going to fall apart eventually. Um, I'm not overly worried about the Angels. I will uh, say, you know, yeah, I, as far as the Rangers and the Angels, they're going to be thorns in the side, of course. Um, but... <laughs> I'm yes. not. I'm not. Too, I'm not worried about them. Like, sure, they they might win mid 80s, low 80s game amount of games, but 
I'm, I'm not worried about them as far as a playoff race comes. Um, I will. I, I mean, I'm going to be a little bit different and say I, I am not worried about the Angels. There's no doubt. I think the Rangers are. <sighs> well, they just I lost know. Jake Odorizzi, Odorizzi today, so they're ready. Oh, they're, did they? Yeah, they're pitching. I didn't know that. The pitching is ready okay. to hit. So, and eventually, we all know D- Jacob Degrom eventually is going to be gone. It, that, that's a, that, that's it. Kind of hinges on that. There's no doubt. But I mean, they they have rectified their pitching problems and they do have a good offense so it's just all going to depend on health it, you know, John Gray's really good the DeGrom, Grand really good they got Eovaldi they got uh like you said Odorizzi I don't know what's uh what's wrong with them though I guess so I didn't see what it was specifically yeah saw but either way I do they have done a lot of good things and they got a ton of talent coming up so they they have ammo to make trades or you know for young guys to come up and possibly produce for him. So I, I'm going to say I'm I'm not necessarily not worried about the, the Rangers. I I think they're going to be pretty decent uh, going forward for a while. But uh, Angels, yeah, I, they're going to Angel. They yeah. haven't really done anything. I, I feel like they're the same team as they always are. Yeah, pretty much. So, um, But, yeah, so, I mean, like I said, it helps that, you know, those other teams are struggling as well. Um, mm-hmm. But, yeah, again, to the schedule, too, looking at the schedule in April, it's really not a friendly schedule either. It's... Kind of a tough no. schedule. I, I would be fine with just getting to the month at at least at 500, you know, within a game oh, or two yeah. of 500. I'd be happy. Um, we go to the Cubs after this. I feel like we should be able to win that series. Um, yeah, we'd like to take it, but they're playing yeah. pretty good. Yeah, they, they are. Not, like you, I think you, you had them as one of your, not really, maybe Dark, dark Horse. Yeah, kind of a Dark Horse, but yeah, they, could, they yeah. could make some moves. Um, we, end, we end the month with, uh, let's see, we go to Toronto at the end of the month. I'm just... I'm I'm already saying Toronto. I think it's I think it's a four game series when we go to Toronto. Um, yeah, they're gonna be out for blood. I'll be happy with just one. Yep. I'll be happy with just one win in that series. Honestly, I will, um, honestly I think you're almost right. They're gonna be they're gonna be jacked up for that series. Yeah. And yeah, one and one and three wouldn't be the worst thing ever as yeah. long as we are we go into that series not like three games um, under five hundred. Yeah, and then uh, let me check. So Cubs, and I know we come home play the Rockies. Cardinals come here. Um, that could be a good series. Oh, the, the Ooh, yeah. Phillies. I know the Phillies are off to a slow start, but you know they're still a decent team. So we, yeah, we go to the Phillies as well. So. Yeah, that is quite. It a is. Schedule. Yeah, it's quite. It's quite a. It's a, it's a schedule. Um, the first yeah. first month here. So, but it's better. I'd rather get most of that out of the way now. So. Yeah, I would agree. Uh, when do we play the Athletics? Athletics uh, don't come up until <laughs> May second through the fourth. Oh, okay. And then the Astros are following. My birthday weekend, the Astros are coming here. So. Ooh, nice. Yep. But, yeah, so, I mean, just – they're, they're going to be fine. Um, a lot of the balls they were hitting, too, they've been hitting – they've been hitting the ball hard, too, and that's that's a good thing. The, the, the offense in general has been hitting the ball hard. I feel like once – I know I know this is a common excuse. I'm not trying to use an excuse, but once the weather heats up, especially here in Seattle because it's been unusually cold still. Um, yeah. Once it starts heating up more, some of those balls that were hit during the opening homestand in a couple months, those are going to be home runs. Um, well, so. it was unusually warm when I was there in October. So yeah, yeah. Now it's unusually cold. Um, but yeah, I'm not. I'm not really worried because at least they're, they're putting together good at bats. They're, um, they're hitting the ball hard. It's the, the offense is going to come. It's going to be there. Um, yes. I, I like what I, I like what I've seen from Kalenic for the most part. He's striking out a little bit too much from, from who? Liking, but that's I mean that from uh, Jared Kalenic. Kalenic? Kalenic. Kalenic. Kel- I knew that. Kel-nick? I don't know why I said that. Kalenic. Kel- I say Kalenic, but... Uh, well, you're, Nebra- you're Nebraskan, so I guess... Uh, yeah, is it really Kalenic? Kalenic. You don't pronounce You don't pronounce the second E? Jared Kalenic. As far as I've heard. <laughs> well, I've heard it all, but... Uh, no, sure, but he's been... Yeah, not- yeah he's, I mean, he's, he's off to a better start than, you know, he's had, so he's... Yeah, and and I kind of figured, you know, with how hot he was, for the most part. Yeah, yeah, with how hot he was in the spring, I figured that kind of a, a little bit of a slump would be the start of the year, and you know, people will overreact to it. But yeah, but he's he's going to be fine. I think I think we're finally going to get at least good production from him. So I would actually say that maybe we need to play him against lefties sometimes. Maybe give him a little more consistent mm-hmm. playing time. Uh, I don't I don't like how he will sit for two games in a row just. I don't like the strict platoon, let's say that. I think he should definitely play against all righties, and then I think we should probably get him in there for half the lefties as well. Just There's something to say about just consistency of playing time would might yeah, help him yeah. out a little bit. Yeah, I can agree with that. Um, yeah, Teoscar is finally getting going after starting very slow. Um, yes. So let's see. Wong, I'm not worried about Wong. He'll, he's he's a vet. He'll get it going. Um, 
Cal looks great. Yeah, Cal. Oh, jeez, is he still? I think he's still hitting over three hundred. I think. Um, yeah, he is. Man, Cal is yeah, he, very great. He is. He is as advertised. I like. Like we talked about. I don't know if we talked about it. I think it was just in on Facebook or whatever. But it's crazy to think at this time last year, Cal was one of the worst hitters I've ever seen in it my is, life that yeah. any of us have ever seen. We were all just like, "What?" You're like, going on we were here? all saying, oh, "Don't even send them to Coma. Send them to Arkansas." <laughs> Absolutely, it was. I mean, it was legitimately it was, terrible. Yeah, it was. It was bad. It was worse than what Kelnick was. <laughs> Absolutely, it was, and it, he looked completely lost up there. And then, then he went to Tacoma. He went to Tacoma for four days. Murphy got injured, and suddenly he was a new player. <laughs> it, it truly makes no sense, but I, it's the best thing that's ever happened. There's no doubt about it. Um, and then who else? There was someone else I wanted to touch base on real quick. Uh, shoot, because uh, you mentioned Cal. Pollock? Ah, shoot. On offense, yeah. Um, mm. oh, wow, uh, I had a total. I had a total thought process, and then well, JP right, well, or Pollock, those are the uh, two guys left. J, JP's been hitting the ball pretty well too, so yeah, he has for sure. Um, but yeah, so yeah, like I said, the offense it's gonna it's gonna start bouncing out soon. I think hopefully maybe today a uh, nice little comeback win like that spark the guys a little mm-hmm. bit. Uh, if we can yeah. win, if we can win the series in Cleveland, that would be big time. Um, we got. Marco tomorrow, and then Kirby on Sunday. I think Kirby will yep. bounce back. Um, Kirby just kind of had some bad luck. I feel like it was his first start, first sure. game. So um, we'll see if Marco can at least eat some innings tomorrow. And yeah, I think like I said, well, I'm, no, no worries, man. It's yes, so that is that is legit right yeah. now. Yes, it's frustrating, but I'm definitely not. Uh, Got to keep really remembering we started. Now we don't want to start like this, but we started 29 39 last year, so we'll we'll be fine. Yeah, not saying I want. Yeah, we should. I don't want to do that yeah, again. let's not do that again. But you know, it just goes to show. You know, things can change quickly. I'd rather, like we were saying, I'd rather start slow and then heat up Correct. as the season goes. So it would be ideal if we could actually be in the division race at the end of the year and not just the playoff race. Well, I mean, hey, yeah, I mean, the Astros are struggling too, so we're both <laughs> off the slow. Oh, slow God. Oh, I, I don't think the dogs agree with that. Well, so. yeah, they don't like the Astros. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Well, I had the screen door open, and apparently they can't handle themselves. So that's we we give them one when they can't handle themselves. Yeah. You got to shut it. Yeah. So otherwise, then uh, rest of the division right now. Yeah. So I mean, you got the Angels at the top right now, and the Rangers, uh, then the Astros and us, and Oakland at the bottom, which is pretty much how it's always Oakland. Oakland's going to be there all year. So um, yeah, yeah. The Tampa Bay Rays. Uh, I think. I yeah, believe... I guess my my bold take <laughs> last week of the of the Rays possibly not making the uh, the playoffs is not looking great right yeah. now. I know it's very, like we're saying it's very early, but my God, they so, look good. So I believe they they won or are winning today too. So seven zero, I think yeah. it's going to be. So yeah, they're yeah. off to quite the start. Um, the amount of times they just develop these random pitchers is just astounding. I, yeah. I, a guy like Springs or is it Springs or Springs? I don't remember, but he's awesome now. It's just mm-hmm. they just develop these guys out of nowhere, and it's just they don't even have Glasnow yet. So I mean, they're they're only going to get better. I still have questions about that offense, though. I mean, they got a good sure. they got a good top of the lineup, but once you get to the middle and bottom, I, I, I got questions. So well, like right now, like who, like Siri, the guy that was on the Astros last mm-hmm. year, is is playing really well, and I I don't think he's as good as he's playing right now, at least on offense. So yeah, you, you're right. Their their offense is going to regress some. There's no doubt. They're not seven and zero good, but yeah. maybe my, maybe my bold take was a stupid take. Well, it wouldn't be the first time, right? No, it would be very much closer to but, uh, more often than not. But hey, uh, sometimes bull takes are taken as real takes, so you know, got to be careful out there. So that's true, you yeah. do. Bull takes, homer takes, it's all the same thing, I guess. So <laughs> yeah, yikes, yikes, bad take. So uh, yeah, but um, rest of the MLB. Um, let's see, Braves are off to a great sure start. Any surprises, I guess, right now. I um, know. off the top of my head, I'm not really. Pittsburgh, really? Pittsburgh's they're five and two yeah. right now. They're off to a good start. Um, I love O'ne- O'Neill Cruz. He's he's a heck of a yeah. player. I'm glad I he's got him in fantasy. So if you want if you want to make a trade, let's let's talk uh, Luis Castillo, right? Yeah, I actually did want him, but at that time I had already had. Uh, oh man, what was my? Now you know what? Maybe I didn't have a shortstop yet because I think my first shortstop I took was Nico Horner from the for the Cubs. So. 
Yeah, never mind. You you did snake him from me, yeah. just like you snaked. Uh, who did you? T- oh yeah, Tioscar. Tioscar. Like yeah. well, I think I think we're pretty well balanced though in our in our Mariners and our in our we homer did, yeah, in our yeah, homer picks. Half, yeah, yeah you, we, our homer picks were about half and half. You're right. Yeah, so, um, but yeah, surprises. I I don't see any right now. Not, nothing jumping out at me. Um, yeah. yeah, Braves are six and one. No surprise there. Um, nope. I guess I'd say maybe I'm. Kind of surprised the Mets are hanging around 500. I thought maybe they would have started a little slow, especially with some of their injuries they're dealing with. So it's good for them yeah. to hang around 500. Uh, I, Phillies. I think I'd say the Phillies starting off slow. That's a bit of a surprise too. There. Yeah, I, I mean, but they don't have Harper or Hoskins, and I mean, I don't know about that pitching either. I know they got Nola, but after mm-hmm. that, but I, yeah, they're in. I know they're in the World Series last year. That, that's that was quite surprising i would say for most people. yeah the whole nl side of the playoffs last year was just so it was weird <laughs> yes it was like the march madness tournament this year yeah yeah it was so. <clears throat> um yeah other than that i man and i can't think of any other mlb updates right now um yeah no yeah things are just it's one week of the season so not too much to really dive into there yet so correct yeah, so, yeah, Mariners, they'll, they'll get going here. Um, let's see, before our next episode in a couple weeks. So we got the rest of the series, two games left in Cleveland. Um, well, what just happened? Okay, let's – all right. So, yeah, uh, Cleveland going to Chicago then for the Cubs and then coming home against Colorado and then Milwaukee. So that's what we got before the next, but about, about before the next episode. So yeah, we'll know a little bit more. I would hope by then we'll at least have a slight bit of news on Mr. Ray as well. I, I don't I've never really heard much of it. Yeah, anything. that's that's gonna. I guess we haven't really talked about Robert Ray yet. Um, hopefully it's not because what he has is a pre is usually a precursor to Tommy John. So hopefully that is yes. not it. Um, but I have heard. I mean, I've read some stats that you know in the last five years people that have come back from this in the same season, but it has taken like two months. So, I mean, he's out for a while. I think there's no doubt about it, but they got to play it slow. I it's, mean, all I'm saying is it's a, it's really a good thing that we did not trade flex in, and it's a good thing we have a surplus of pitchers in the system that, you know. Correct. Because I, I believe it's – I've had a pick between one of them. I believe it's going to be Miller who's going to come up. Miller, Bryce Miller next will month. be the think, next one up. Right? Yeah, I think, and I think they're going to follow the trend they've been doing the last couple of years. They had Gilbert up in mid-May. They had Kirby up in mid May, so I think yep. I think yep. Miller he'll be up in mid May. So as long, yeah, as I think well, the original plan the original plan would have been to have him up and replace Marco. Um, but if Ray is still out, then yeah, he'll probably replace Flexen and Flexen move back to the bullpen. So <sighs> yeah, uh, but yeah, so I mean, for me, I'd say if we can win, if we can take the series in Cleveland, that'd be great. Um, take the series against the Cubs, take the series against the Rockies, and. Um, I'd be happy with one out of three from Milwaukee because they're pretty decent. So I'd be happy with just if we yeah. just won one out of three from Milwaukee. So well, if we could just get to that Milwaukee series at like five hundred, I think I'd be yeah. pretty happy. Yeah. Oh, well, wait, so we're three and five now. Okay, so if we take the next three series before Milwaukee, uh, well, this three one and, five, then four and the six, next two, we'd be one game six over. And seven, right? We'd be eight and eight heading into that Milwaukee series if we take these okay. next few series. I'd be completely <coughs> fine with being eight and eight heading into that series. Yeah, yeah. Like we can kind of press the reset button at that point and see what happens. Yeah, for sure. So, like, like I said, just get through get through this month at least around five hundred. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, I believe that's all we got for the Mariners and the MLB updates. Um, so. Let's kick it all over to our off-season talk. So, NFL um, free agent <sighs> updates. I can't think of any really big. Free- oh wait, I can't think of one. Marcus, do you do you know a big free agent move that recently happened? Oh, uh, am I forgetting something? <laughs> I don't I, know. I mean, it's one that I think is pretty great, but you might not agree with. Oh, Bobby! Did we not talk about Bobby Wagner? No, last we. Time? So the last last our last episode, I was literally talking about how. It's oh, probably going right. to happen, and then the next day, crap. the next day it happened. So Yeah, you're right, it did. I forgot about that. Yeah, he, he is back. Bobby Wagner is back in Seattle. One year, $7 million deal. Probably going to be his last year, I feel like. Um, so he'll probably, so? I feel like it. I feel like the one is year... Is he one that might retire early before he's like totally... Probably, gas probably. I feel like yeah. the one year the one year deal, I feel like that, that kind of signals, yeah, he's, this is probably going to be it. Um, I guess. But yeah, that is that is fantastic. Now we have we have 
the field general for the defense there to get everyone well, I set. Think that's and, what you were missing last year. Yep. And I, I know he's lost a step, but that, I don't think that's where his most important. His step. loss of step is still better than 98% of the Correct. league. Correct. <laughs> and I honestly don't think that's where his important lie his importance is as, as important for your, your specific team <clears> either. <throat> so, yeah. so yeah, great. I hate it. I hate it a lot. Uh, it's yeah. too bad that it happened. Uh, it's great. That it hopefully happens. it fails miserably for you. Um, on top of that, uh, uh, news that there's some I saw today that apparently the Titans may be trying to trade up to the number three spot with the Cardinals um, to take a quarterback. If that happens, welcome Will Anderson to Seattle. So, yeah. Uh, Will Levis, I think you're going to take the other Will. <laughs> no, hey, Will Levis, hey, congratulations to Tom. Apparently the Colts are all in on him. So, Ooh, yeah, the yeah, Colts. That's sound, too bad. Sounds like the Colts are going to be taking bad. Will Levis, so. Congratulations, Tom. You're going to get your quarterback. <laughs> well, you know, I, this could be another Josh Allen where I think the guy's going to totally suck, but I think I don't like Will yeah, Levis yeah, a little bit. Yeah. So <laughs> I don't, I don't know. know about that. Because they are kind of similar talents. If, anyone, if anyone's going to be a Josh Allen from this year's draft, it's Anthony Richardson. So. Yeah, I could see that. But he's, he's quite a bit more uh, of a runner than Allen, even. <laughs> but yeah, you're right. They're the projects with the big arms. Yeah, yeah I oh, Will Levis, so, man. It just it's too bad that there's zero chance you're gonna get him, I wish, but no, no it's not this at this way, yeah, well, this just wait and see and if the if the Cardinals do trade that number three pick and someone comes in and we get the four quarterbacks before, then yeah, Will Anderson, he's gonna be a Seahawk and that's gonna be fantastic. <sighs> So. Yeah, great. This what you need. And then at pick the twenty, pressure. take take Nolan Smith at pick twenty. More 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 rushers. It's just loaded uh, up. If you get two edge rushers that yeah, I would hate that. That's, I mean yeah. I, I hopefully Pete does something stupid and drafts like a running back again or something like I'll, that. I'll say, so here's here's where I'm at. Um, if we take Will Anderson at five, if we're able to get him at five, then as much as I love Nolan Smith and would like him, at 20, I'd actually say, uh, uh, God, what's the Ohio State's receiver? Uh, Smith Jackson, and Jigba. Smith. Yes, I would actually say yeah. him at 20. I, um, I know some people might say, whoa, offense, wide receiver, we don't need that, but Honestly, yeah, do, we, we need a third receiver right now, and we need to pay attention to the fact that Lockett is on the tail end of his career. So I would, oh god, yeah, you absolutely yeah. need another. So receiver. I would, I would be so. totally fine with. I, if there's any one receiver I would prefer in this draft, it would be Quentin Johnson. So if he's still there at 20, then I would love that as well. Pair he's another. not going to fall that far, is he? There's been some mocks I've seen actually putting him uh, around 20 to 25. So if he, if you get him, I'll actually be kind of pissed off because I, I kind of think he might end up being the best receiver in this. I, I agree with that. Actually, I, I do think he's going to be the best receiver out of this draft. So um, uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't enjoy that at all. Yeah. I hope that. I wasn't even thinking about that, so uh, yeah, that better not happen. But um, if we don't, if if the Cardinals take their third pick, which obviously they probably take Will Anderson, um, so if we don't get Will Anderson at five, and we either get you know Anthony Richardson, one of the quarterbacks, or we trade back to seven and take Tyree Wilson, um, I'd still even if we take Tyree Wilson at seven or five, whichever one happens if we trade, I still mm-hmm. would want us to take Nolan Smith um, at twenty. Uh, like you said, you can't have too many pass rushers. Um, no, it's and Nolan impossible. Smith. I think. I think. Honestly, I'll talk about Anderson, Carter, and all of them. I think Nolan Smith could end up actually being the best pass rusher out of this class. So he's, um, he, yeah, he's definitely got. He's got. The, he's got the, the, the potential. For, for correct, and he he's a little. Not that it, really it might matters. take it might take some time, yeah. but uh, yeah. I mean, cl- clearly Will Anderson is the pro- yeah. Will Anderson, he's a st- he's a step in day one. He's good to go. And Nolan, someone like Nolan Smith, maybe sure it might take might take some time, but I feel like long term um, that, that it would be it would it would be worth it. So yeah, I hate it very much because I'm pretty sure Will Anderson is like Von Miller, and he'll be good the, the moment he yeah. steps on the field. So um, that sucks. Just so hoping I the Cardinals, hoping the Cardinals, Cardinal, and. Uh, Mess it up, so trade, trade yeah, it. Yeah, it sucks no matter what, but it would suck even worse yeah. with a good team got him. So, yep, especially team that now has that field general at linebacker. So, <sighs> yeah, yeah, so things. I mean, yeah, things looking great here for the Seahawks. I mean, we're in, we're in, we're in a fantastic spot right now. So it's it's great. So yeah, I would agree with you. Yeah. So uh, Niners, any 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 updates with the Niners? Uh, honestly, not really. It's, any it's or crazy. like what what do you? I know you don't draft till the third round. Correct. Yeah, we got three in the third round. So what are so, you? What are you hoping? What are you like looking for? I mean, I don't. I don't have necessarily players in mind, but I, I definitely have positions. Uh, I think the three that we should target in the third round is 
one tight end. Tight end needs to be a, pr- a priority because not only do we love to run two tight end sets, and our second tight end is always garbage and can never block, but Kittle has an injury it, history know, too. It, yeah, he gets injured a lot. He, he plays the guy plays hard, and he's gonna get hurt. And we just gotta have a guy that can step in and and not suck when Kittle goes down. It's just. I don't know what it is about this fan base and their love affair with this guy, Ross Dwelly, who's our second tight end. He's terrible. And I, that sounds a lot like him. the uh, Luke Wilson days out here. I don't were, get it. He, <laughs> yeah. He, he, everybody loves him. And we just, we, I thought we were going to let him go. Like we, we didn't tender him his contract. And I'm like, Oh great. He's finally gone. And then we brought him back. So he's still here. I'm just hoping it says a tight end three. The guy cannot block to save his life. He can receive, he can catch, but that's not what we really need out of our, I mean, yeah, we need Kittle's a special case, but we need a guy that can do both because our offense is complete motion and blocking for either wide receivers or, or running backs. Cause we, we run from the wide receivers a lot. We got to have a guy that's the same skill set as Kittle. And I, clearly they're not going to be as good as him, but uh, who I would want is actually there's a tight end in Iowa, same where, where Kittle was from. His last name is Laporta, and I would love to have him, but he's projected in the late second. So, I mean, he could follow Ooh, third. I think, I think the Seahawks have been looking at him, too, because I think the Seahawks would possibly be looking at taking a tight end as well, which I'd be fine with. Oh, great. Well, so. I, well that's my that's my guy, uh, especially since he's from the tight end factory uh, that is Iowa. I, just off the top of my head, you know, Kittle, Dallas Clark, uh, uh the guy that you have now that was at the Broncos. What, what fan, is that fan, yeah. Yeah, no fan. Uh, and I know they have more. They're just, they're literally tight end you. They just turn them out. So I, I would love to have Laporta. So tight end for one would be uh, my number one need. Uh, number two, I would want to draft offensive tackle. Although I think uh, we got a guy to replace our lost uh, Mike McGlinchey, who signed for an asinine amount in Denver. Good luck with that, oh. <laughs> by the way. I didn't even want him back. So I'm, I'm glad he's gone. He got like five years, $90 million. That is the most that is the gi- most giant overpay for the most mediocre player ever. But whatever. That, that's Russell that was Wilson. Prob- that, let's let's be honest. That was probably a Russell Wilson signing. Maybe. I, I mean, my goodness. That guy single-handedly got two of our three quarterbacks injured last year. He, he cannot pass block. He's he's actually a very good run blocker. There's well, no, hey, it's a, it's, a, it's a good thing he's blocking for someone who has Wolverine blood now, man. Oh, yeah. Well, he's got no problems. There's no doubt. And he's got that water, too. So, I mean, yep. uh, if he if once, you know, once when he lets the rusher free <laughs> on, off of his right shoulder and it hits Russell Wilson, he'll be fine. Yeah, he but will. literally, McGlinchey got uh, Garoppolo and, uh, and Trey Lance hurt. <laughs> he didn't really get pretty hurt, although... I guess you could say he did because we had to help him on the right side with a tight end and the tight end got beat to get Purdy hurt. So, but he single-handedly got Garoppolo and Trey Lance hurt last year. I, I hate, I've hated him for years now and I'm so glad we didn't bring him back. But so the guy we got replacing him is a guy named Colton McKivitz, who was a third round draft pick about four years ago. So uh, he's just been tooling around as a backup swing tackle for a couple of years and he's going to get a shot. I think he's going to, I think he will be our starting right tackle, and I think he will be no worse than McGlinchey. So, um, but we don't really have a backup swing tackle at this point, at least a good one or a reliable one. So I, we definitely need to draft offensive tackle. So I'm going tight end, offensive tackle, and then the third position, well, I'll go wide receiver because um, yeah, yeah. next year we're going to lose our third receiver, Juwan Jennings. He's going to be gone. Mr. And, Mr. Third down? Yeah, Mr. Third down. I just know we're not going to resign him just because he's going to get more money somewhere else. And we're, we just we, – we don't have the money to resign everybody. We just don't. When you when you got good players that you got to pay, it's just – it is what it is. So that – it's just not going to happen. So wide receiver, offensive tackle, tight end. Those are my – Round three targets. All right. Uh, you got any, oh, and wide it, receiver. I want. I want Trey Palmer out of Nebraska. Of course, I do have a player. Of course. Of course yeah. Do. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Um, is there any update on Purdy? Is what's the status on him? I mean, so far so good. Everything's looking fine, but you never know until they can actually start throwing and stuff. So mm-hmm. that's when, once he can actually get out there and start moving around. Uh, right now, he looks like the Bionic Man. I've seen a few photos. His whole arm is like a robot. So. 
it's got the huge, the brace that basically goes from his shoulder all the way to his, uh, his wrist. I don't right. know. It's very odd, but, but yeah, they said it went, it went swimmingly. Uh, it went, it went good. And they still, they expect him to be ready around the training camp area, but I don't, I don't believe that. I, I believe that Trey Lance will start the first four games of the year and then we'll go from there. It's, uh, Will he take the job and run with it, or will Purdy get his job back? That's all there is to it. That's that's the time. That's the uh, that that's what's good. we're going to be looking at, you know, in the off season or in the training camp and at the beginning of the year. As 49ers fans, it is. All right. All right. Uh, real quick before we go on to our who cares section, and uh, I can take a nap while I talk about Nebraska. Um, <laughs> Let's do a quick uh, top five to seven picks mock. Okay. So sure. I'm going to need your help with the teams. Yeah. Um, we'll we'll just go one. each by each. I'll go who's okay, I that's go, number one there and you go, go who's number one. So um, number one, Panthers. There was a report today that came out saying that it like, sounds like they're going to take Bryce Young. It might be a smoke screen, but I don't know. It's, it's got to be obvious. I mean, I don't think they really need to overthink it. So – Maybe they're trying to put it as a smoke screen, or maybe they really are, but I would hope they would lean towards the side of really are, because it, sh- it should be Bryce Young. So, I number one, I'm going to say Bryce Young to the Panthers. Yeah, I, I, I would have actually maybe leaned towards C.J. Stroud, but I I don't know. I the, the Ohio State quarterback thing in the past has not worked out a lot for teams, so I think that's a legit fear for some teams. Uh, I know that Maybe Fields is going to change that. I mean, it's still to be determined. Clearly, he's an elite runner. But, yeah, it's got to be Bryce Young, right? It just has to be. Yeah, yeah it's got to be. So, that number two, the Texans, yeah, they're going to take Stroud, I say. Then. So yes, two would be Stroud, correct. Texans. Uh, number three, this is where it gets interesting. Um, I. So, much- let's, how about we do this? Let's give a... Uh, if the Cardinals pick, clearly we're both going Will Anderson. Yeah. If the Cardinals pick, then yeah, it's going to be Will Anderson. Um, if they trade it, I believe they will be trading it to the Raiders. Um, not the Titans. I believe it will be traded to the Raiders. And the Raiders will take uh, Will Levis. I've heard that they like him. Do you think – is that legit? Uh, I mean, who knows? It's really hard to tell at this time of year. There's so many smokescreen things. Like, God, but I, I, I if, Will Will Levis seems like an, a Raiders type of quarterback, honestly. Yeah, I, man, I just cannot. Honestly, I don't know if this is stupid of me or not. I can't see the Titans trading up to the third pick just because they're in they're in like actual salary cap problems right now, it, 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 and and they just signed their defensive tackle to a four-year, $94 million. They need They need picks. They can't be trading them away. That's the Raiders, though. They make stupid decisions. That's what I mean. No, that's why I, I, that's why I say I can't see the Titans doing it. I can oh, see yeah, the Raiders yeah. doing yeah, Titans, it. Sorry, yeah. I don't think it's going to be the Titans trading at the third. Yeah. If it was, if it does, I think it would be the, I think you might be right. It could be the Raiders. <sighs> I could see him taking Richardson, though, as a project behind Garoppolo. Because they got, I mean, man, I, I, that's another thing. I, I, I know that McDaniels likes Garoppolo, and they signed him to a three-year deal. I would say they would take Richardson in that, in that, at that point. All right. And then pick number four, the Colts. Uh, congratulations, Tom. If this does happen, I would have Richardson then going to the Colts. Yes. Yeah. And then uh, if the Colts are picking fourth and Richardson is gone in my mock draft, I don't know that they take Levis, but Ooh. maybe – God. I, this is probably me being biased. I guess I'm just going to have to say, yeah, they would take Will Levis. i got to right. stop. So Tom, Tom is rooting for me and not you at this point. <laughs> yeah, I just I – know, I know I'm being biased and I'm doing the Josh Allen thing from a couple years ago where I just hate <laughs> – I just – I have a quarterback that I just think sucks and – but I know I gotta realize he's got some tools and maybe some teams like him. So yes, the Colts are gonna take a quarterback. So it's just gotta be him. There's after that, there's kind of a drop off, I believe. So no. and then uh, number five, the Seahawks. So if Whew. if the Cardinals do trade their pick and they don't take Will Anderson, then yes, Will Anderson to the Seahawks. If the Cardinals make their pick and they obviously they pick Will Anderson. I would say then, and if in, in this case, in my mock draft, the Raiders trade up to three, so we would not be trading mm-hmm. with them back to seven. Um, then I would say maybe there's a chance we trade with the Bears. The Bears go up to five and take Jalen Carter. Um, 
But I don't know. I think I think Jay and Carter fall far enough to them in nine. I, um, I actually agree. I think Carter's falling out of the yeah. top ten just and not because of his character issues, it's because of his yeah. she, Sorry, I almost said a bad word. I didn't. Almost I didn't. made me work. Uh, almost made me work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because of his combine performance, man. That guy was out of shape. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to say the Seahawks just stick here at five and they take Tyree Wilson. Yes. If it's going to, if, I, I, I yes. If you, if Will Anderson's gone, I do believe it'll be Tyree Wilson, the Texas Tech guy as well. Uh, number six, the Lions, uh, Christian Gonzalez. Oh yeah, I like him. Uh, uh, wait, what? Sorry, what team was was picking there? Lions. Lions, and they oh you know, yeah, they need a cornerback bad. Yeah. But uh, let me think here for a second. So, yeah, Christian Gonzalez and is it? They wouldn't take Jalen Carter, would they? I don't think so. Uh, I mean, God, I, 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 I keep I saying I that he's going to fall they out of the top Well, 10, they could. Still, they could to pair him with Aiden Hutchinson, maybe. Yeah, I, I mean they, I they took like Ndamukong. Hey, if if anything, Carter could be similar to uh, Ndamukasu, and Correct. I mean maybe. Man, I could see it happening, but I uh, they need a, they need a cornerback bad. They did sign Emmanuel Mosley from the 49ers. I don't know who their second quarter. Oh wait, they got Okuda that they drafted. But, yeah, he's State. been he's been hit or miss. He's been that's true. Yeah, he's been a that's very loss. true. I mean, you got. It is Christian Gonzalez can't miss like some people say he is, I guess. I'm I'm a little I like him, but I don't know that I feel like he's I don't know, set and forget cornerback, I guess. Mm-hmm. You probably don't like him very much, I would I would guess. Mm, no. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I figured. Yeah, fine. They need cornerbacks at a premium and there's too many questions with Jalen Carter, so and they do have a they got some offensive line guys, so they probably wouldn't take it out. Yeah, I'll go. I'll go the quarterback, Christian Gonzalez as well. All right, and we'll do the last one, number seven. So in this case, uh, so if the Cardinals trade back to seven, then with the Raiders, then I believe they take Miles Murphy there. It's uh, seven. Um, if man the, at seven, it, if the yeah, Raiders, if the Raiders stay there at seven, and in this case, um. I see all the quarterbacks are gone, right? At this point. Yep. yep. Yeah. Um, who's the next? Like, oh wait, no. Wait, long? hold who's on. The, who's the next year? Are we missing a quarterback? Well, we've been doing the what if if the Cardinals trade or not. If so, the Cardinals didn't oh. trade. They would then then oh we then need, I need to go back. I need to go back here. I need to go back here. Yeah, we screwed up. <laughs> we we give too many uh, uh, different scenarios. Yeah. If, and then we so hold on. Ourselves. If the Cardinals do trade. No, sorry. If the Cardinals don't trade and they take Will Anderson, Will Levis to the Colts at four, Anthony yep. Richardson to the Seahawks at five. You really think you would take? I guess yeah, you probably would actually. Honestly, I do know that the Seahawks have had an extensive meeting and talks with Anthony Richardson's agent. If that means I, I mean, def- I mean, it's gotta. Ha- I mean, the two, what, what was Gino? Is a three-year deal? Three years. Well, it's technically, honestly, technically, it's a one-year deal. Honestly. Year to year, but yeah. yeah, it's year to year. Yeah. So I can if, see you taking a quarterback as well. You're probably, I yep. could definitely see that. If 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 Anderson gets taken by the Cardinals, they don't trade, and Richardson falls to five, it's going to be Richardson to the Seahawks. Which okay. still, for you, yeah, you, you just love, I'm sure. No, I, 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 Anthony, Anthony Richardson is a guy that I think could completely bomb or be absolutely awesome. Well, so, yeah, yeah I, but think of it like this. Anthony Richardson gets two to three years to develop behind Geno yeah, Smith. I don't and, like that at in, all. In that the general system. Yeah, so... Yeah, that's yeah. Let's just okay. So let's say there's no quarterbacks available. I could see the Raiders taking my my favorite tackle in this entire draft is Peter Skaronsky from uh, Northwestern. I think the guy is absolutely awesome, and whoever gets him, in my opinion, is getting the best offensive lineman in the draft by far. All right. Well, we'll have one more episode before the draft. Um... Yep. So we'll we'll see if we want to see what happens over the next couple of weeks if any trades happen or you know yeah. mocks that come out and draft stock rises and all that. So we'll see. So that uh, brings us to the who cares section. So Marcus, anything you want to update about uh, Nebraska ball or you know anything else? I mean, right now there's not really a whole lot going on. Just of course uh, there's a there's a transfer that. Was from Grand Island, Nebraska, that went to Virginia. He was a high four star, and he transferred back to the state 
but not here to Creighton. So uh, I'm, that was a blow to, to me because I I loved that guy in high school. I thought he was going to be awesome, and I wanted him here, and then he goes to the team I hate the most. So I unfollowed him on all on all social media. Oh, that, that'll show him. That'll show him. Yeah, that'll, that'll show him. There you go, Isaac. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, but there's also another guy who is playing for a team in your area. Well, he did last year. Uh, Hunter Salas. He plays for, well, played for Gonzaga. Hmm. And, sorry, is it Gonzaga or Gonzaga? Depends on who you ask. I say Gonzaga. Okay. Hmm. Okay. I, I say Gonzaga as well. Okay. So, whatever. That's what we're going with. So, yeah, he was a five star recruit out of Omaha, Nebraska, and he went to Gonzaga, and he's now transferring. Uh, out of Gonzaga, and but he's got upwards of 15 teams going after him. So I, I don't know. We are going after him hard. We're meeting with him in person this Sunday. Uh, who knows? I, I doubt we get him. I just I, I've kind of lost all faith in Nebraska ball doing things good these days. It's just we just nothing ever nothing good ever happens. So yeah, no, I got nothing. And when when it comes to football, it's just. Standard off-season stuff. I like what Rule is doing, Matt Rule, but um, I just got to see it first. It's I'm I'm done getting my hopes up for Nebraska sports. They got to show me before I will start to believe that good things are happening. Uh, real quick, speaking of you mentioned Crane, uh, how about that run they went on? <laughs> Wait, can you say? Hold on. The uh, sorry, the uh, my wife with the hip problem is yelling at me. What? what hello. Oh, sorry. She wants, uh, apparently the dog Jackson is wanting to get on the bed with her. No, so I'm putting him on the bed. There we go. Okay. Sorry. So you said right. something about a, a run. Someone went on. I, I totally missed that. <laughs> Creighton. Oh, how about that? Dude, one? <laughs> oh man. I was, you don't know. You don't know how much anxiety I had about that. The, you, there couldn't be a better setup for them to yeah, get to the honestly. championship game. It's never going to happen again. They blew it. They completely blew it. They get a I, – I know Baylor was a three seed. First of all, they beat an 11 seed NC State in the first round who – NC State wasn't good, and they barely beat NC State. Baylor was completely overrated as a three seed, and they beat them. And then they get a 15 seed Princeton to get to their first Elite Eight ever. And then after that, it's – a five seed and possibly a nine seed to get to the championship game. They blew it. They completely blew it. And I, I love it. That's all. <laughs> what, a sh- what a shame. What a crying shame. And then of course they, they lost the game on a kind of a controversial foul call uh, against uh, San Diego state. And yeah, yeah. If that was Nebraska, I'd be upset, but uh, unfortunately for Creighton, it wasn't Nebraska. And I thought it was a great call. It was going to, Clearly a foul, and it was a great call by them refs. Yeah, by the rule book, it's a foul, I know, but it's just in that moment, you know, yeah, that point yeah, in the game, yeah. you know, there's, there's a certain point where you have to just let them play. But Disagree. I know by, by the rule book, it, it's, it's a foul, but it's still. Yeah, no, that is just too bad. What a shame. Yeah, what a shame. So those refs, shame. though. <laughs> Well, um, you know, my Who Cares section, uh, quick update in the Sounders. Um, they're currently, I believe, 4-1-1. and one and one. Um, Jordan Morris has been a goal-scoring machine. He's, you know, practically been the Holland of the MLS right now, just scoring at an incredible pace. I think he as he scored four goals a couple weeks ago in one match, um, and I believe he has seven or eight goals total. He leads the MLS by and far. How that. many games are we into this MLS uh, MLS season right now? Six. Six, I believe. Oh. So, oh. yeah. Um, and then Leo Chu uh, has been assisting on pretty much all of his goals. So, Sounders may have found something here to, to hold on to and keep going with while it's hot. Um, while, yeah, that may mean keeping some of their bigger names on the bench like Ruby Diaz, but... Rui Diaz has always been injured, so I mean, I feel like they just got to stick with what's going, what's working, and stay with what's hot. And then uh, across the pond, uh, Manchester City got some big matches coming up. Um, well, I mean, not so big tomorrow against Southampton. They should win that one um, and stay. Oh you know, yeah, definitely. They should. They should dominate that one. Stay. Well, they should actually. Yes, you're right. Yeah, um, I know. I Holland, know. Holland will be back. Um, come back from his injury. I don't want him to play too much though, because the more important match is coming up next week in the Champions League against Bayern Munich. You mean um, Aaron or Hey Hey Lund? 
Um, which I am very worried about them playing against Bayern Munich because they recently uh, hired Thomas uh, Tuchel or Tuchel. I don't know how I never know how to pronounce it over there. Tuchel, I think, as their wait, they they play across wait in Bayern Munich and the German league. Yeah, this is this so this is the the European Champions League. Sure, it is whatever that means. Okay, um, got it. Yeah, so <laughs> um, so yeah, so I. Worried about this. I hope they win this because if they can win this and then beat either Chelsea or Real Madrid, I feel like they should win whoever they play in the final. So it's just they got it. It's going to be a hard path to get there. It's hopefully they can get there. Um, but I have my my doubts, my concerns. Um, but yeah, so yeah, hopefully they beat Southampton tomorrow because let's see, Arsenal. Arsenal plays Liverpool, so hopefully, ugh, ew, I have to root for Liverpool tomorrow. So um, Ooh, is what Scott, it is. Uh, uh, Tom loves Liverpool as well. So. Oh yeah, Tom loves <laughs> Liverpool. Yeah, he, he he's all about Liverpool. <laughs> see, I learned some things. Um, but yeah, so that's what's going on there. Uh, Huskies, I think they... So I, got a, I, yeah, I was going to say, I got a big who cares for you. What do you think about uh, your boy Hopkins coming back? That seems like a bad move. <sighs> I just, I, uh, <laughs> anyways, <Yeah. laughs> on that note... I get it. I, yeah. I know what you mean. Uh, on that note, about... literally, literally, who cares? Um, yeah. <laughs> No, it's I. I don't get it. Um, I really, I, yeah, it, it doesn't make sense to me. I. I don't get it. No, what has um, he done? What has he shown to warrant another year? I guess is what I. The fact that he I've brought been. them to their first NCAA tournament in like a decade in his first or second year there, sure. But what's he done since then? Exactly. And, um, and now I people are transferring out of Hoiberg, you. Right now, now there are, there are some big players transferring out of UW. So you know, like yeah. It's it's really sad because Washington, honestly, in recent years, Washington really has had a really good pipeline of players coming through, but the Huskies have not been able to to get them. Like Washington, Washington's been kind of a basketball state. Like they, we've, Washington yeah. State has had some really good players. You know who got all those guys? And Rumor. yeah, no, can't seem to get those guys. So yeah, yeah, that's that's one thing. If if we could find a coach that is a good combo mix between. Uh, Lorenzo Romar and uh, Hopkins. That'd be perfect. Because yeah. Romar, great recruiter, um, horrible coach. Yes. Um, Hopkins, decent coach and yeah. horrible recruiter. So you know, if we if we get a mix between those, that'll be perfect. So yeah. But yeah, so it is what it is. That's what I say. So agreed. So yeah, that's our Who Cares section, so now we'll top it off with our dugout chatter, so uh, I'll start us off real quick by talking about the Mario, I won't say any spoilers, but the Mario movie. Yeah. Fantastic. Absolutely oh, amazing. Good. Um, it, I mean, yeah, it's it's everything that I hope for and then some, and we might get, we might even get more in this universe. It might be in the start of a Nintendo movie universe, which... Honestly, it would be awesome. So, um, oh god, yeah, it would be awesome. Yeah. I know that Nintendo is really weird about this stuff, and they are very gun shy after they're the loosening up a bit. Though, and, yeah, I mean, uh, clearly the the fiasco of nineteen ninety three is something they it we took them talked, a long yeah, time yeah. to get. But they didn't. Yeah. The thing is, they didn't really have any hand in that, though. So, no, they just allowed. Yeah, they allowed free reign, and yeah. I'm not even gonna lie. I didn't hate that. <laughs> I didn't hate the movie like everybody does, but I get it. I get why people yeah. hate it. I kind of liked it because of how bad it was. It was one of those things. And I love Bob Hoskins, and I think he was great, even though he hated every second of his life during filming. But uh, So, yeah, I, I get it, though. But I'm, I'm actually pretty excited to see this. Yeah, so there's definitely – I'm probably going to see it at least once or twice more. There's a lot of Easter eggs in it that if you're like me, growing up as a Mario kid, playing like most, if not all, the Mario games growing up and even other Nintendo games – yeah. Um, so many Easter eggs. I caught a lot, but I know there's a lot I probably didn't catch, so I would go see again. Um, even in the music, you gotta. There's a lot. There's a lot that they throw in there for like the really the hardcore Nintendo Mario fans. Um, and I'll say too, without spoiling anything, I think it had the right amount of Yoshi in the movie too, without spoiling anything. So what? So what? When I know you, <laughs> does that mean? Does that mean he ain't in the movie at all? I, I'm not spoiling anything. I'll just say I think personally, I think it had the right amount of Yoshi in the movie. So that's all. That's all. So awesome. that means he's not in it at all, or he's barely in it. That's, so that I'm not spoiling sucks. anything. That's 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 all I'm saying. 
That's actually disappointing to hear because um, I know you're a hater of Yoshi for one reason. I will say they did. I, I, I get why they went with the storyline they did, but they did my boy Luigi dirty um, a little bit. <laughs> Um, but I understand why they went the route they went with it, but uh, overall still fan- fantastic movie. Um, everything, everything you wanted in a Mario movie. Can you go into depth in a little more in depth of why you hate Yoshi? Cause it makes no sense to me. Yoshi, in my opinion, is the best character Yoshi is in overrated. Nintendo history. Yoshi is overrated. But wh- how is he overrated? <laughs> What's so awesome about him? Everything. That's specific. <laughs> well, you can't tell me why you hate him, and I can't tell you why I love he sto- him. So he's, I guess... he, he, he stole a tournament from one of my favorite characters. So you, you not, see, you didn't see all my tags. I tagged. You I, I did he see them, but I, if I remember didn't correctly, win. didn't he beat Link or Luigi? Wasn't that wasn't that who he beat? No, you. Uh, no, uh, there was another. Oh man, who was? That? Nobody has a clue what we're talking about. So. No, uh, well, for those who don't know, we're in a video game group, and we had like a 128-character <clears throat> video game, uh, NCAA bracket style, uh, down to the, the last character, to who's the best video game character of all time. And someone did beat beat uh, Link, and it was not Yoshi. You're wrong on that. And I remember, and I was like, I can't believe that happened. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look it up. I'll find it. But uh, Arthur Morgan from Red Dead Redemption ended up winning the whole thing. Well, that, that's fine. But, yeah. yeah, but Yoshi, you, I think you're misremembering and you're giving Yoshi a bad name because of it. That's all. I don't know. I mean, it's it's Yoshi. I, he's fine, but I think I just think he's overhyped. So he's fine. Okay. <laughs> Agree to disagree. Um, but yeah, uh, so there's that movie. Um, as far as video games go, uh, Horizon Forbidden West, the DLC, Burning Shores is coming out soon. So yeah, actually, yeah, next week I think actually, yeah. So I think. Oh, is it? Is it? It's really either next week or the week after, sometime in the next week or two. So looking forward to that. Um, and then Star Wars coming up at the end of the month here. Star Wars uh, Jedi Survivor coming mm-hmm. up here at the end of the month. So yeah. Have you still been playing uh, Hogwarts? Or are you done? Um, I haven't gotten around to playing too many video games over the last week or two, but. Uh, yeah, I've actually, I actually haven't played a video game in like a week and a yeah. half, which is pretty weird. Kind of just going through because I've been playing the show, and then I also have been playing uh, Metroid Prime Remastered. So. Oh, you're playing that too? I love it. Yeah. I, did you ever play it on GameCube or not? Uh, about halfway through when I was a kid. Okay. Yeah, I, never I had, a, I had a thing bit. as a kid. I would, fin- I would barely finish games when I was a kid. So. Oh, yeah. That, I think most of us did that. There's a few that I would finish, but most of the time it's, our attention spans were... Yeah. We're, we're, we're that oh, of a kid, so... Speaking of this, though, Pokemon Stadium coming to the Nintendo 64 on the Switch online this week, so... Actually, wait, no, See, today. I haven't, I, today. I haven't yeah. paid the extra See. money for that yet. Is it is it worth it to get I would the Game say Boy so, because now they got, they got the Game Boy Advance, they got Game Boy games on there, they got the Sega Genesis. I'd say it's worth it. Because yeah. I've been playing, actually, the... Uh, I play a bunch of the Game Boy games. But I, also, I, I but you're it. someone, though, who has, like, all that stuff still, right? Yeah, but... There, there's something. It's just so much easier to play on the Switch right now. Yeah, that, yeah. I can sit in my bed and play uh, you know, on the actual Switch handheld. So it's just, it's way better. Yes, I prefer playing on the original hardware, and I have all that stuff hooked up in my basement. But, but the Switch is just, it, it's one of the greatest consoles ever made. Actually, it I know really I don't, is. I don't play it enough, yeah. but it really is one yeah. of the better consoles it in is. the history of video game consoles. It definitely is. And uh, shows I've watched been watching lately. Uh, Mandalorian's been going on. I think we got like two more episodes of that for this season. It's been it's been all right. Um, it's kind of been all over the place. Not really as yeah. I've heard set. this season isn't nearly as good as the other. Not ones. as good as the it's first actually. two. No, um, it's just kind of been all over the place. It doesn't really have a sense of direction. Um, yeah. And then Ted Lasso, which just Ted Lasso is just absolutely amazing. Which even for you, I know you don't care about soccer, but I you would lo- trust me, you would love Ted Lasso. It's, oh, I would watch that, but I don't yeah. have oh, that's that's Apple, Apple, right? Yeah, yeah, Apple. yeah. I don't have uh, that. But yeah, don't yeah, got so that. Ted Lasso is amazing as usual. So um, yeah, I yeah. have not been watching anything right now. Weirdly enough, I've, there's been a lot going on with the the wife's hip surgery the mm. last week, so it's been she's yelling at me again. So <laughs> hold on, I gotta look at it. Yes. Well, yeah, I'm on the phone. <laughs> yes. 
Yes, she needs help. So well, we that's the, pretty much we pretty much are done. So that's the wrap <laughs> right about our hour. That's the wrap it up. Yeah, yeah that's the wrap it up. We're, <laughs> at, we're at about our hour mark anyway. So there I need is. to get going too. So yeah, yeah. There you go. So okay, on that on that good. note, yeah, um, that's episode two. Congratulations. So yeah. Um, so did you yeah. pour four shots in your drink this time? Are you good? Um, I probably did like two and a half, but I'm I'm good. Okay, good. That's yeah. What, yeah, good. There you go. You're I made, learning. Yeah, I made sure. I'm I'm learning. Yep. So. <laughs> Yeah, so hopefully the Mariners get going. Hopefully today was a bit of a spark. And yeah, hopefully next time we're talking, they're at least 500 or close to it. So. Agreed. Yeah. All right, well, thank you for watching. Uh, be sure to like the video, uh, subscribe to the channel, follow me on Twitter. And hey, Marcus, congratulations on your victory.